The most famous part of the Caledonian Canal route is the long and skinny Loch Ness. 22 miles long and over 700 feet deep, it's essentially the vast chasm of that fault line filled with water. They say Loch Ness contains more water than all the lakes of England and Wales combined. Loch Ness is deepest near Arkart Castle. While thoroughly ruined and little more than an empty shell to climb through, in its medieval heyday, this strategically situated castle was one of the most important in the Highlands, controlling traffic along the Great Glen. Today, so gloriously situated with a view of virtually the entire lake, it's extremely popular with tourists and the perfect place to look for the Loch Ness Monster. While the lake is, frankly, boring, the local tourist industry thrives on the legend of the Loch Ness Monster. It is a thrilling thought, and there have been several seemingly reliable sightings. And of course, there's a touristy exhibit that would love to tell the story. The Loch Ness Exhibition is spearheaded by scientist and naturalist Adrian Schein, who spent decades studying the Nessie phenomenon. Adrian, can you tell me the mission of this exhibition? Our mission is to be part of the essential sense of place. We are not a monster show, but we will tell you a lot, whether you like it or not, about Scottish lochs by arguing about the Loch Ness Monster. But we do it in a fairly entertaining way, I like to think, because we're talking about the one thing we would all like to have in Loch Ness. What we do is take you through the history of the search for an unusual animal in Loch Ness. In the 60s, it was surface surveillance with big telephoto lens cameras. Um, having failed in the 70s, we went underwater, uh, partly in my own little photographic hide, Misham. Mm -hmm. Having failed to encounter a beast, we resorted to sonar in the 1980s sort of underwater radar. Mm -hmm. And we built a flat pack sonar search vessel on a beach in 1981, patrolled up and down the lock. Um, the contacts led in the end to Operation Deep Scan in 1987 with the fleet. In the 90s, we got a bit canny. We used an indirect method and we have been ever since. And it's general science. What could the locks support in terms of food resources? What do the temperatures tell us about what could live in Loch Ness? And finally, we have the environmental message in terms of the record within the Loch Ness sediments. I would like our visitors to go away thinking about what could live in Loch Ness when we have explained Loch Ness. Go and see Loch Ness, but if you want to understand it, come here. And at the same time, and above everything, we want them to go away knowing a lot more about Scottish lochs.